So the issue we're running into here is the number of sides. Like you, you have one side and then another side, and then you can close it off with a line, but that would give you one, two, three sides. And if you cut it in halves, you would get the same thing. So you have one, two, three. So one of the ways we can fix that is make it square. So if you go from here to there, and then kind of close it off this way. You should be able to cut it in a way that is square. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can trim on the top side. And that's it, yeah. Now if you look at it, you can see that you have one side here, so one side there, three and four. So now we have four sides to work from. So um, and let's see if that's going to work. Uh, that should be fine. Um, so there's a few ways you could close this up. Uh, one of the ways would be using the curve network. Curve network on the surfaces. And just close off your four sides. Enter. And then it gives you a bunch of options. So typically you would work with position if it's flat. But in this case we know that B is going straight. So it's flat. A should follow the curvature of that surface. And then D should do the same thing. So anything that touches the surface should be tangent. Because if it's curvature, it's probably going to be bumpy. It's going to go up. So tangent would be ideal for this kind of surface. And we want the same thing for D. So A and B would follow this surface. And then C would just go straight. And same thing for B. It's flat. In fact, for B and C, we can set them as loose. So B and C could be loose. Our position pretty much constrains the line of the surface to be exactly on that curve. Loose lets it kind of follow the curvature from B and just lets it be loose and not so accurate to the curve. And you can also preview it and see what type of results you would get. Um, for example, if D was position, is it really that different? And it seems like it's not. It seems like it's almost the same. You can even ask it to be curvature instead of tangent. And then you can see that now it becomes bumpy. It goes up and then down. As opposed to with tangency, it pretty much stays straight. And again, it's because tangency aligns the first row of points, the first set of points, and then curvature aligns the second set of points. So because this curves in, it forces the second row of points to go inwards. And in this case, that's not what we want. We want it to fall over your face and then go flat. So tangency is much better. So most of the time, tangency is going to work. Um, Sometimes, if you have more complicated surfaces, you might want to use curvature. Um, yeah, I think that should work for us. Tendency. Okay. And I'll mirror these two. Doesn't seem to snap. Great snap. Okay. Yeah. And then holding shift, I can mirror that to the other side. And what I really want to watch or uh, look at right now is in between these two surfaces. And I want to make sure that they're smooth. So I'll just join these three surfaces and then I can just look at it with the analyze tool. And it seems better than it was, but there is there is a kink in between these two surfaces. So it's not so smooth in between the two patches. So if you want to fix that, you can also match the surfaces, enter, and you can 
match both of them or we cannot yeah because i joined everything we cannot match them so we have to explode and then we have to match both surfaces to each other enter with tangency on both sides i would not recommend using curvature i know i used it right here but most of the time tangency would give you better results if you have symmetry between surfaces you should always use tangency And we want to use the average surface, and that's it. So I know for a fact that this is going to work, so I don't have to check them anymore. I can delete this, and then mirror both of them to the other side. And if I join them, and if I look at the analyze surface zebra, it should be much better than it was. It's still kind of flat right here, you can see it goes back up and then it drops around. But that's the nature of this type of surface because if it's round and then it becomes flatter, it's going to have a transition in between which is kind of straight. Um, another thing to note here is that you can adjust the mesh and by default it's going to be kind of optimized, maybe at the middle. And so if you want a better approximation of, of the reflections, you can crank it up. And then if you do a preview, you can kind of see how it's, uh, it creates a denser preview. So doing that might help with, um, with getting smoother results in your preview. You can also change the stripe size, make it finer. And here we can see it seems like it's very unified, so it's very smooth. So that's it. That's how you would fix that kind of symmetry issue.